Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, and I'm really excited to have you here with me this evening. It is a Saturday night, and I'm coming to you from my bathroom, and this is not a normal Saturday night, or I guess it is a normal COVID-type Saturday night, in that Alan and I have been home all evening. We did not go out to dinner, and we did not go to a movie as we used to do pre-COVID, but anyway, you've got to go with the flow and just experience it a day at a time. So what I am doing is being with you this evening, and I love you, 50 Plus Beauty family, and I'm going to be showing you a lactic acid peel, and this is the third lactic acid peel I have done, and I waited about two weeks because I'm also using Obagi, so I wanted to give my skin a little time to heal up because the Obagi is rather a strong program as well. But lactic acid is a very mild peel and it is great for hyperpigmentation and age spots, but it is considered a zero level peel in that it is a very mild alpha hydroxy acid, probably one of the mildest, so it is a great peel to get your start with. Lactic acid is actually a milk acid and it is a very mild AHA. And a couple of really great things about lactic acid are, number one, it is a very mild peel and it does not really produce much visible peeling. It is not like you're going to use this and two days later, you're going to have to stay home because you look like a snake. Basically, the last two times I've used this, I had a little tiny bit of peeling around my nose and I think I'll kind of avoid my nose because I don't think that needs to peel anymore. I had maybe a tiny little bit of peeling around my mouth but actually using tretinoin is worse peeling than this is. And the second truly big benefit of this is, and I have really noticed this, in fact, I've been using Obagi, I've got a wonderful new vitamin C preparation that I'm using called Eva's Naturals, which is wonderful. And the second greatest benefit of lactic acid is that over maybe an eight week period of using it once every week or once every two weeks, it helps your skin cells turn over more frequently as our skin did when we were much younger. And that just gives your skin a beautiful glow. I have no makeup on obviously right now. And as you can tell, my skin just kind of has a glow to it. And it is really just amazing because all of these years I've used tretinoin since I've come to YouTube, maybe for three years. And even before that, I had very oily, heavy, thick skin. And I was never really one of these people that you would say, oh, Beth has glowy skin. But I kind of think I do have glowy skin. And I think this lactic acid is really helping that out. Okay, I'm talking too much and let's get into this peel. And it's really very simple, although I will say, I am not a doctor, I am not a dermatologist, I have no medical training at all, and always you do need to consult your own dermatologist to see if a lactic acid peel is for you. Okay, end of disclaimer, here we go. Now to begin with, just like any peel, you always start with decreasing the skin, and I'm going to apply the peel over my face and over my neck. I have one little place here where I had a breakout, and so I'm going to kind of ignore that area altogether but you can either use 90% alcohol, just the kind of alcohol you buy at Walgreens, you can do that, or I purchased this peel from Makeup Artist Choice and they sent a little pH prep solution, actually I bought it. So here we go. I think that is probably just their alcohol solution and I'll just put it on a little cotton round here and I'll use the camera as my, as my mirror and I get in under my eyes. There we go. It just feels a little tingly. It's not an acid. It's just something to clean off the skin. A little red there though, anyway. And then, then we go here, and I should remember to bring it up on my skin. I'm trying to remember not to drag my skin down. And I'm also going to do the decollete area. So I'll go ahead, I'm looking in my mirror here. I've got my makeup light here to have some light in this bathroom because I don't have my my professional lights in here. Okay, there we go, all nice and sanitized. Okay, and here is the 40% lactic acid peel I am using. And here we go, I'll go ahead and put this on this cotton round. And they actually said you do not need gloves at all and in fact you could apply this with your fingers. It is that mild of a peel. So here we go and you're supposed to leave it on for three to 10 minutes. And again, I'm going to totally avoid that area over there. Maybe I should look in my mirror here. This is an acid peel after all. Gotta be a little more careful. I will totally avoid that little acne spot. I don't usually get acne. 
It's a, a gift that I thought left me when I was 59. <laughs> I got acne clear through there. I'm also going to apply it right under my brow. Just under that brow bone there. And shut your eyes. You don't want to get any of this in your eye, for sure. And really, I should be peeling my ears too, but I left my earrings on, so we'll let that one go. And right now, it doesn't feel like anything is on my skin at all. It really doesn't. It might feel a little like an alcohol toner or something like that. Now I'm going to come down on this part of my neck. I really don't have very many discolorations at all on my chest area, on my decollete, as they say. I pretty much avoided the sun there. I'm just going to add just a little bit more because I don't think I applied this very thick at all. And you shouldn't be thick, but at least you should have enough on there to feel like you've got liquid there. Okay, I'm going to set the timer for six minutes. There we go. It's probably about seven because I've had this on a little bit. So it just feels a little bit tingly. It does not really hurt at all. I wouldn't say it hurts. Just a little bit like you've got alcohol all over your face or something like that. I will tell you while we're waiting for this to do its thing, what has been going on today. And thank you for the prayers that some of you have sent in for my father-in-law, Don. He is almost 90 years old. He'll be 90 in about a month, but he is going through some really serious medical problems and he is in the hospital right now, which is difficult because with the COVID thing, although I don't personally know anyone who has COVID, it hasn't really affected me in that way. And bless you if you have been affected by it directly, but I've realized that due to the COVID, it really does affect a lot of other things. For instance, we are not able to go in and see Don in the hospital at all. He has been in the ICU, he's battling his second round of cancer, and he has a lot of other health problems, so it is not looking good. But I never really realized, you know, you would hear that on the news about how awful it was, that people could not go in and visit their loved ones. You always heard that. And I always heard that and I thought, oh, that's too bad. But I didn't really realize what that meant until Don now is in the hospital, you know, facing a very grave situation and none of us can go in there. And it is really, really tough. And it looks like we may be calling in home hospice because I guess Medicare covers hospice care in home. Medicare will also cover it in a hospital setting if the patient has to be in the hospital to obtain their treatment. And in Don's case, he needs a hospital bed, he needs oxygen, he needs some other supportive kind of things. But as long as the hospice nurse comes and checks on him, and there's also a hospice healthcare worker who will come in a few times a week, basically it's kind of a neat thing we are meeting with the hospice worker tomorrow and she's going to do an assessment on Don. She'll go into the hospital and do that assessment to determine if he is eligible now for the home hospice care. But if so, they will actually bring in a hospital bed and they have this nice family room that has beautiful windows that are open to his garden and to all of his trees and his pretty grass and his nice deck. And so he'll be in the hospital bed in the middle of that family room, being able to look out the window and they'll bring him a wheelchair, they'll bring him the oxygen he needs, they'll bring him all of the other things that he needs, and Medicare pays for all of that. And I'm really sharing this with you in case you are ever in a situation where you have a loved one who is in this sort of a situation, just to let you know that financially, as long as the person has Medicare and needs it, you're gonna be okay, which is really wonderful. Okay, let's get back to talking about this face situation. Now it's turning a little bit red, but not too bad and it feels a little stingy. Let's see where we are on the time. I'm getting a little anxious about it. I'm starting to want to take it off. Oh, two minutes left. I think I can survive two minutes. And I will tell you, you do not need to neutralize this. With many acids, you do need to use like baking soda and water to neutralize it and stop the acidic action. But all lactic acid needs is just water on your face. And so in just about another minute and a half, I will be bending over here and splashing water on my face and patting it off and the peel will be done. 
And if I have any after effects the next day or so, I will show you those. But largely in the last two peels I've done, I've had almost nothing, just a little bit of peeling around my nose. And then within a few days, my skin just looks absolutely lovely. And I have never really gotten into using acids before, but I'm so excited that I'm planning several videos to show you different types of acid peels on your face and also on your body. And I am really excited about that because I am certainly worried about discoloration on my arm skin, for instance, and peels can really help with that. And if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things anti-aging, I hope you'll subscribe, click that notification bell, give this video a thumbs up and or share it with a friend. Okay, while I was talking there, the alarm just went off. So I'm going to go down to the sink and wash this off. Okay, ooh, that feels pretty good, I have to admit. It is just a slight bit of sting. That is all, just a little bit of stinging. It doesn't feel bad at all. So that is how my skin looks after. It is a little red. Well, it wasn't bad at all, just a little bit of stinging, and it just feels good to get it off my skin, I have to admit. And as you can see, my skin is just a little red, but by morning, that should all go away. And after you do any sort of peel, you really shouldn't use any harsh skincare on your skin at all, no Retin-A or anything like that. But I am going to follow up with a little Argan Oil, which was also from Makeup Artist Choice. And it's just a little oil to kind of heal your skin. See, it's just like that. This feels like any oil. Ooh, that feels really good, super good and I'll get the, the brows there because I did do a little bit of acid up there. Feels really nice. I just think it helps a little bit when your skin glows and you, you have nice skin. You know, this world is so strange lately. It's kind of a nice little thing. If you have pretty glowing skin, it just kind of makes you feel good. Now I'll go down on that chest too with that argan oil. Well, that was the application of the 40% lactic acid peel. And I guess what I'll do is I'll check with you in the morning so you can see how it looks. Okay, good morning. It is Sunday morning and I've just woken up and this is my face right now after that peel last night. Let me see if I can show it to you. Really nothing looks that different except that I really did get a big red mark here. After I did that peel, I was kind of freaked out and that is the problem when you do a lot of things to yourself is that there's usually one point on something new that you go, oh my gosh, what did I do? Will this be the thing that ruins me? And uh, I know that's not positive, but I had a moment of terror last night because after that peel where I talked to you about Don and his situation, which is going on today, which is really a sad thing for us. But anyway, uh, I realized after I did that peel with you that when you're doing a peel, you should not be thinking about other things. You should really just be watching your skin, watching that clock, um, because once I was through with that peel and I took it off and got done with that part of the video, I looked at my skin and I had hugely deep looking red marks here. And then this one, I don't know if you can see it, it's still a little red. There was a huge swath of red right there. And I thought maybe I left the peel on too long. And another general point, I am doing Obagi right now, and normally you would not do peels and things probably while you're in the throes of heavy duty Obagi irritation. Maybe you could do a light lactic acid peel when you get a little bit through the irritation, which I thought I was, but just some things to think about in terms of peels. But I think it's going to have a beautiful result in terms of just bringing on the glow to my skin. And fortunately, the big red marks are gone this morning. I have to admit, they were so red last night, I didn't tell Alan because he tends to go, I told you so, you shouldn't do that stuff to your skin. Hi everyone, it is two nights after I did the lactic acid peel and I am getting some peeling here, right there. That's where I tend to get it. And I've got a little bit starting there, you can tell. Not too bad at all. And then this red mark that I had, I can feel that it is going to start to peel. And usually that is the case when you have a red mark on your face after a peel. It usually means the red place was hit a little bit harder with the acid and that it will have some peeling. And I can already tell that maybe this time tomorrow it will look like this and that will peel off. But I really don't have any peeling anywhere else. I will report tomorrow on if this really does turn into peeling. But I will say usually I go through two or three days of looking not very glowy 
<laughs> looking a little bit peely in places. And then about the third or fourth day after a lactic acid peel, I just look really glowy and like my skin looks good. And forgive my crappy makeup. I uh, We have been with uh, Alan's dad. He's been in hospice and uh, it, was, it was a hard day. It was a hard day, but it, it was a hard day. That's all I'll say. It was a hard day. But anyway, that is how the lactic acid peel is. Um, I'll, I'll report tomorrow if I get peeling off of that. Otherwise, it's been pretty uneventful. Okay, at this point in the video, I normally do a thought for the day. And since I'm thinking about the situation with Don, I did have a few thoughts I wanted to share with you. And first is really, really, really enjoy your loved ones, especially those that are older, which fortunately we do that because we have them over for dinner every couple of weeks. We stop in and see them. And thank God we have done that. Don has been through so many different health crises, a couple of cancers, a couple of strokes, diabetes, a couple of heart attacks. And so quite honestly, as hard as it is to go through these medical crises with him because we worry so much about him, it had almost gotten to where we just think he's the Energizer Bunny and he'll pull through it and he'll be fine. And unfortunately, in this one, he may not be fine. And that's why we're meeting with the hospice worker this morning at 1130. And that's going to be sad, but it's also going to be helpful because before going into the hospital and Don went into the hospital about a week ago and we haven't been able to see him, which has been awful. But before that, he was home with Darlene and, you know, she is in her upper 80s too. And she had been his pretty much full-time caregiver. And that's really tough too. So it will be wonderful in a way having hospice come in so Darlene can have some help with that. Here is my thought for the day. And that is that if you are married and your spouse does the finances or you do the finances and your spouse does not, it is very, very, very important for you to share details of that with your spouse to make an Excel spreadsheet or whatever, or just write it down on a pad of all of your checking account, saving account, retirement account, all of the passwords, all of the detailed financial information about your life. I would urge all of you to have a nice financial conversation with your spouse, write some of these things down and be prepared. It doesn't matter your age because anything can happen to any one of us at any time. There was a philosophy that said, you live your best life when you always have death sitting on your shoulder. And that sounds kind of awful, but in a way it's kind of helpful because if you think that death is sitting on your shoulder, you say, what is the best use of time I can make for today and how do I prepare for tomorrow? Okay, that's my thought for the day and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.